shell shocker. Oh no you don't, Tara Bennett yelled to her eight-year-old brother Tommy. That's my shell, mine! Tara jumped up from behind the beach blanket and ran to the shore. She saw the waves wash over Tommy's toes as he rinsed the sand off the shell. Give it to me, Tara demanded, wrenching the gleaming white object from her brother's hands. It's for my shell collection, she sneered. The biggest and best shell collection in the world. No fair, Tara. I saw it first. No fair, Tara mimicked. She narrowed her blue eyes. You're a baby. Tara held the seashell up to the light and admired its smooth curves and pointed spiral. It sparkled like a jewel in the afternoon sun. It's the most perfect shell in the world, she announced. Everybody is going to be jealous when they see it. She closed her eyes and pictured herself back at school, winning the seventh grade science fair with her new shell. All the kids in my class will be green with envy, Tara thought happily. Can I hold it? Tommy asked softly. No way, Tara snapped. You can't even look at it without my permission. Clutching the shell tightly, she turned and marched across the beach far away from her annoying little brother. Then she flopped down on the sand to examine her newest treasure. It's beautiful, she gasped, turning the shell back and forth in her hands. And it's mine, not Tommy's, mine. Whenever Tommy found a seashell, he pressed it to his ear. He said he could hear the roar of the ocean inside. Tommy is such a jerk, Tara thought. She turned the shell over and over in her hand. Everyone knows you can't really hear the ocean inside a shell. Just the same, Tara held the white shell up to her ear. Oh, gross, Tara cried. A clump of wet seaweed slid down her cheek. She wiped the green slime away. Then she placed the shell against her ear again and listened. Help me, a tiny voice called from inside. Tara screamed and dropped the shell. Who, who said that, she stammered gazing down at the shell. Then she jerked her head up, expecting to see Tommy laughing at her, but no one stood there. Tara sat alone. She jumped up and backed away from the shell. She stared suspiciously down at it. Was it you? She whispered. Did you talk? Don't be silly, Tara, she told herself. Shells can't talk. Creeping forward, she kicked the shell gently with her toe. It rolled across the sand. Then it stopped. Help me! The voice cried louder this time. Tara screamed again. She began to shiver under the rays of the hot summer sun. She wrapped her arms tightly around herself, then took a deep, steadying breath. Who's in there? she demanded. I'm trapped, the tiny voice wailed. Help me! Tara gasped. I can't believe it, she cried out. The shell is talking to me! Tara's head reeled. Beads of sweat dripped from her long blonde hair. Of course I'm talking to you. I need your help, the tiny voice pleaded. I'm a prisoner. Please pick me up. Tara didn't know what to do. She inched closer to the shell. She leaned over and peeked inside. It appeared to be empty. I have to find out where that voice is coming from, Tara thought. I just have to. Tara carefully lifted the shell from the sand. How can I help you, Tara asked. Her voice trembled. Take me to the cave to help me escape. Please, trust me, the voice begged. Trust you, Tara asked breathlessly. I can't even see you. Come to the cave to help me escape. Then you'll understand. Then you'll see me. Tara hesitated. A talking shell, she thought. What an opportunity. She grasped the shell in her hands and smirked. Why should I help you escape, she asked. You're the world's first talking shell. I can make a fortune with you. I'll be rich and famous. People will pay a lot of money to hear a seashell talk. Tara's mind raced with all the possibilities. Maybe she would star on her own TV show. Tara and her amazing talking shell. But Tara, I will only talk to you. When you're alone, so no one will believe you the voice replied but listen to me there's something inside the cave that will really make you rich and famous what is it tara demanded shaking the shell tell me it's the biggest seashell in the world the voice told her 
the biggest shell in the world. Tara pretended not to care. Oh, really? She, she muttered. The biggest shell in the world, huh? Where is this cave? I'll show you, the voice answered. Just walk along the shoreline to the north end of the beach. I'll show you where it is. I promise. Tara bubbled with excitement. I'll be the most famous shell collector in the world, she thought. I'll be Tara, the shell queen. Okay, she agreed. I'll do it. I'll take you to the cave. Yes! The voice hissed. Tara took a small step across the sand. What about mum and dad, she asked. Should I tell them where I'm going? She gazed across the crowded beach. She spotted her mother and father sprawled out under their neon pink beach umbrella. Mum turned the pages of a book. Dad slept. Don't worry, they won't even notice you're gone, the voice urged. Let's go. Tara turned toward the north end of the beach. The sun cast an eerie glow over the towering sand dunes. The ocean waves hammered the shore. Maybe I'll bring mum with me. There's no lifeguard over there, she muttered. A loud screech echoed inside the shell. Help me, the voice screamed out. Help me now! Okay, okay, Tara snapped. I'll help you, but remember your promise. The biggest shell in the world belongs to me. Clasping the seashell in her hands, Tara stomped across the beach. The hard, wet sand hurt the bottom of her feet, but she was determined to find the cave and the biggest shell in the world. Tara walked and walked. Aren't we there yet? She whined. Keep going, the voice replied. But it's getting late, she moaned. Tara gazed out over the water. The sun floated on the edge of the sea like a big red beach ball. I'm kind of scared, Tara mumbled. I'm, I'm all alone out here. She turned and searched for her mum and dad and Tommy. She thought she spotted them alongside their pink umbrella on the edge of the beach. Three tiny specks in the sand. I want to go back, Tara whimpered. We've wandered too far. But we're so close, the voice said softly. We can't turn back now. Look to your right, by the rocks. Tara scanned the beach. There, the opening of the cave, practically in front of her. Finally, Tara gasped. She dashed to the cave's dark entrance and listened. From deep inside the cave, she heard a frightening, ear-splitting screech. What's that? Tara whispered. It's only the wind, the tiny voice explained. Let's go in. But, but I, I'm a little afraid, Tara admitted. It's so dark in there. Don't worry, the voice replied. I can guide you through the cave. Just do exactly as I say. Walk straight ahead and don't touch the walls. Tara took a deep breath and stepped forward. The darkness swallowed her up. She stumbled blindly ahead. The cave floor dipped and pitched. Tara reached her hand out in front of her. She groped at the curtain of dark. She staggered on. A rock, a huge rock, stood in her path. Her foot slammed into it. Oh no, she screamed as she stumbled. Her arms flew up her sides, up the walls to the cave. Tara shrieked the walls. They moved. They squirmed. With thousands and thousands of black hairy spiders, the spiders crawled over Tara's neck, through her hair and up her arms. Tara leaped away from the wall. She, she swatted frantically at the spiders. Their hairy legs tangled in her hair, pinched her skin. I'm getting out of here, she shrieked, frantically batting them off. But you can't go now, the tiny voice in the shell pleaded. We've got to help me. We're so close now. Don't you want to own the biggest shell in the world? Don't you want to be rich and famous? Tara hesitated, her skin still prickled from the spiders. Wait, just wait until you see it, the voice crooned. It's the biggest, most beautiful shell you could ever imagine. Tara closed her eyes. Yes, she thought, the most beautiful shell, my shell. This had better be worth it, she grumbled. Oh, it, it is, it is, the tiny voice replied. Just, just wait, you'll see. Tara sighed. She crept deeper into the cave, slowly, very slowly. Keep walking, the voice in the shell whispered. We're almost there, almost there. Tara staggered ahead, barely breathing. No turning back now, she thought to herself. She had to find this huge shell. She had to have it. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Something cracked beneath Tara's feet. What's that? She asked nervously. What am I walking on? Nothing to worry about, the voice in the shell answered. Keep walking, but watch your step. Tara took another step and felt something shatter under her toes. What is it? She demanded. It hurts my feet. I want to know. Tara spun around and slipped. 
Look out, cried the voice, don't fall. Too late, Tara tumbled down into a huge pile of large white stones. Sharp stones. She cried out as the rough edges cut into her skin. What are these? She peered closer. Tara shrieked and shrieked again. Her horrified cries echoed through the large cave. These weren't stones, they were bones. A carpet of bones. No, Tara wailed. She scrambled to her feet. You can keep your big shell. I'm going home. Wait, wait, wait. Don't don't go, the tiny voice begged. There's nothing to fear. Tara stopped. Nothing to fear, she yelled. Look at all the bones in here. They're only fish bones, the voice insisted. The tide carries dead fish into the cave. Tara gazed at the huge pile of bones on the floor. Fish bones. They look awfully big to be fish bones. They're very big fish, the voice explained, but not as big as the biggest shell. Really, Tara said. Her heart raced with excitement. She lifted the little shell up to her eyes and shook it hard. Tell me where it is, she demanded. Tell me now, or you'll be a prisoner here for the rest of your life. Where is the biggest shell in the world? It's close, the voice told her. It's right around the corner. You can almost reach out and touch it. Turn the corner, Tara. Tara gasped. The biggest shell in the world, she thought. It's almost mine. Tara rounded the corner. She stopped, listened. Pound, pound, pound. From the deepest depths of the cave, the beating of a giant monster heart. What's that sound? Tara gasped. It's the pounding of the waves, the voice replied. Hurry up now if you want to see the shell before the tide comes in. Tara trembled. She carefully stepped toward the back of the cave. The pounding grew louder. Clutching the shell nervously, Tara inched forward. A shaft of light filtered through the cave. Tara followed the ray. Down, down, down. And there it sat, the biggest shell in the world. Tara's eyes popped open wide with wonder. The huge shell filled the whole cavern. Its pointed spiral nearly touched the top of the cave. It glistened white and pink, so big, so beautiful. It stole Tara's breath away. It was a perfectly formed shell, like the little one in her hand, but a thousand times larger. The biggest, most beautiful shell in the whole wide world. Tara whispered in awe. See? I told you, the little voice crooned. Tara rushed forward, hugging the gigantic shell in her arms. It was so big, her arms didn't even stretch halfway around it. She stroked its smooth pink curves and gazed up at its tall, twisting spiral. I have found the biggest and best shell of all, Tara thought. I'll be famous, she crowed. I'll be rich. I'll be the greatest shell collector in the whole universe, and everyone will be so jealous. There is something I forgot to tell you, the little voice said. This is truly the biggest shell in the world, and inside it lives the biggest hermit crab in the world. With that, the huge shell rose up, tilted back, and out crawled a monstrous hermit crab, the biggest, ugliest sea creature Tara had ever seen. Its bulging red eyes bounced on the ends of two long stems. Its huge green mouth slammed open and shut with a hideous slurp. Its enormous cruel claws were the scariest part of all. They waved frantically in the air and snapped hard over Tara's head. Tara shrieked and tried to run. Too late. The monster crab snatched Tara up in its giant claws. Help me! Tara screamed. Somebody help me! The tiny voice in the shell burst out laughing. Help me, help me, it mocked. The huge claws of the monster crab pinched Tara's waist. Its pounding heart thundered in her ears. Slimy drool dripped from its hungry jaws. Tara dropped the small shell to the ground. It rolled across the cave and stopped. A tiny hermit crab popped out. Look, mummy, look, the tiny voice screeched. I caught another one. Tara screamed and the giant claws snapped shut around her. Just kidding, guys. It's just me. Hey, look, if you are after more chills, thrills, and... Did I mention chills? 
please subscribe to the Leftovers channel. I'll be doing a whole bunch more super spooky material, especially the Goosebumps book reading. I've tracked down every single one of those 10 tales to give you goosebumps, and I will be reading each story. So subscribe, hit that little bell icon so you can keep getting notified. You know how the system works. And yeah, tune in next time for some more leftovers from the leftover culture review.